this video I'm going to take a look at um, a couple of uh, compositions of trig functions and how you would go about evaluating them using right triangles. I am going to assume that you have previous knowledge on working with inverse trig functions as well as recognizing and having memorized your um, domain and range restrictions for your various trig functions. Um, so I am assuming you have a lot of background information as opposed to just jumping in straight into this. Okay, so let's say we're trying to evaluate this expression right here. We're going to work on the inside part of the function first. All right, we're going to recognize that this is uh, 5 twelfths. So this is going to work nice um, for us to be able to use that bow tie triangle and, our, and figure out which quadrant it should be in so that we can set up a right triangle and then we'll be able to evaluate this outside function here. So to start with, we're going to let, say, theta equal to that inverse of tangent of 5 twelfths. All right, which basically, if you remember, if you're trying to do the inverse function there, you're trying to basically find the angle. So the tangent of theta is equal to 5 twelfths, and I'm looking for that angle. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to want to draw my right triangle. So I have to figure out, okay, well, which one of those bow tie triangles is it? Which quadrant does it uh, lie in? So we're going to draw our right triangle. All right, but let's uh, write some stuff over down over here to help with the placement of this. Okay, so you should hopefully remember that your tangent restrictions are um, the open interval from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. All right, so real quick here. That means that my theta then would have to lie in here. All right, so it can't be here and it can't be here. All right, now in my four quadrants here, go through and do the uh, mnemonic that you have memorized so that it tells you which um, trig functions are positive in which quadrant. So that would be all students take calculus. That's one mnemonic that you can use, which means all of the trig functions are positive in this quadrant. Sine and cosecant are positive in the second quadrant. Tangent and cotangent are positive in the third. And then cosine and secant are positive there in the fourth. All right, so out of these right here, I am trying to find tangent of 5 twelfths. All right, this 5 twelfths is positive. All right, well, down here in the fourth quadrant, tangent would have to be negative. Up here in the first quadrant, tangent is going to have to be positive because all trig functions are positive here. So that tells me that when I draw my right triangle, the right triangle part of the bow tie triangle that you are often taught um, in trig classes is going to have to be in that first quadrant there. All right, so I'm going to just real quickly sketch first quadrant here. And I'm having that portion of the bow tie. All right, so my theta would be here. All right, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that means this side has to be 5, this side has to be 12. All right, now that's a right triangle, so I can do Pythagorean theorem, um, and I can do 5 squared plus 12 squared is going to be equal to whatever this side is here. I'm going to go ahead and do that and find that side. So I'm going to have 25 plus 144 is equal to c squared. Adding there, I get 169 is equal to c squared. So my c has to be 13. All right, so this side right here has to be 13. You might have recognized that being a Pythagorean triplet and could have gotten that hypotenuse um, rather quickly. All right, now that I have this right triangle right here, okay, I've worked the inside out. This triangle represents the inside there. Now I just need to, I can use this triangle then and find the cosine of that theta. Cosine is, by definition, adjacent over hypotenuse. And so adjacent which would be the 12, and hypotenuse is the 13. So 12 over 13. All right, so um, evaluating this uh, composition here of trig functions, I get 12 over 13. All right, so again, no calculator was needed. I'm using those bow tie triangles and keeping in mind what my restrictions are and where those trig functions are positive. 
All right, now let's do another one. Okay, changing up the notation here just a little bit. All right, this is really should be read the inverse sine of two fifths, but a lot of people will say arc sine of two fifths right there. All right, so we're going to work this one out. We're going to do the exact same thing. We'll start on that inside part. The fact that this is a fraction is a good indication to tell me that I'm going to be able to use these right triangles to evaluate this. So I'm going to let theta equal the inverse of sine of two-fifths. Again, whoops, that didn't look like two-fifths. Again, that should tell you that you're hunting for the angle, all right, whose sine is two-fifths. So I'm trying to go backwards and find that angle. All right, so I need to have a right triangle. So I'm going to draw my right triangle. All right, but let's do some uh, thinking here. On this one, I'm going to have to look at my sine restrictions. My sine restrictions all right, are going to be the closed interval from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. All right, so if I draw a nice little coordinate plane here, again, that means theta is going to fall in these two quadrants, so not this one and not this one. All right, doing the all students take calculus. All right, that means all of the trig functions are positive here cosine and secant are positive here. All right, so I have sine and I have um, a positive two-fifths. All right, well, in the fourth quadrant there, sine's going to be negative, so it can't be in the fourth one. Again, this example is ending up being in the first quadrant there. So when I draw my right triangle, I'm going to draw it in the first quadrant. My theta is going to go here definition of sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite puts that side here. Hypotenuse puts the 5 there. Again, Pythagorean theorem there to find that missing side. All right, so it really wouldn't make any difference here. Let's just call this side A. All right, so A squared plus 2 squared has got to equal 5 squared. All right, so A squared plus 4 equals 25. A squared has to equal 21. So that side A is, let's leave it in radical form, square root of 21. So this side right here is square root of 21. All right, now I've worked the inside of this out. This triangle represents that. So now I am down to just the outside part of the function. So cotangent is going to be um, adjacent over hypotenuse, or I'm sorry, adjacent over opposite. All right, so adjacent is going to be square root of 21. Opposite is going to be 2. So square root of 21 over 2 for a final answer there on evaluating that composition of trig functions right there. All right, so just a, a couple of examples um, refreshing um, your memory on that where things are positive in what quadrant refreshing your memory on your restrictions, and then showing how you can evaluate um, that type of expression without the use of a calculator. Definitely thanks for watching. If the videos are helping, don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel and share with your friends. Thanks.